because I mean, there's some, there is a sense, I don't know, if, I, if I'm being um, bad by saying this, but there is a sense in which you could say that an artifact or a piece of art is also a product. But, but I'm, I'm trying to neatly categorise things a little bit more. So I'm moving on to um, thinking about products in a more sort of standard way, something we might all consider as a, piece, as a product. Um, something that's a tangible outcome. Uh, a report, a policy document, training manual, computer program. They're the kinds of things that tend to come forward in um, uh, claims, in portfolios for accreditation. Um, but what I want to do now, <laughs> thank you very much, Peter, is just show another short uh, video clip. So uh, we've talked about valuing judgments uh, in context, and perhaps one of the context issues is how useful a thing is. Clearly, it didn't turn out to be a very useful thing in the sense that nobody bought it. And, uh, sounds like a marvellous idea. I mean, I think it almost I would like to have had one actually <laughs> to, to get around in today's uh, busy um, roads. But anyway. Uh, it didn't take off, but so imagine somebody had designed this and brought this along as a, a as a, a product of theirs. How much difference would it make? What are the issues in relation to assessing a, a piece of work like this? Well, if it was like post it being released as a thing and it has failed, I mean, if they can show a reflective judgment of understanding what actually went wrong, what could have been done, what could have been improved, and being reflective and evaluating and that. That's a skill in itself, mm -hmm. and that would always be a complete benefit to getting doing something else, doing something new, and coming accredited in that sense. So, proving a skill. Yes, absolutely. So you understand the contextual issues. You understand what went wrong with it. And so being able to self-critique in that sense as well. Yes, definitely. I think that's that's important. Something that that raises a number of interesting questions. One obvious question is that, that lots of artifacts are produced by groups of people, not by single individuals. Yes. And that raises a whole series of questions because uh, one of the things about higher education that has begun to affect me is the fact that it's so hugely individualistic. And, and if you actually work with other people, you get accused of plagiarism or collusion and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if, you, if you produce an artifact as an individual that you want to assess, First of all, there might be questions about how much of how much of that artifact is of your making and how much of it is collectively making. How do you separate out the individual's contribution from, from the collective's contribution? But the other difficult, I, 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 I confess an interest here, I, I, I do research into work, place, work. And, and, and one of the things that intrigues me is that very often people who produce artifacts can't tell you what they learned in order to produce yes. the artifact. Because that learning is implicit, it's inscribed in the artifact. Yes. And, and, and their, their concentration wasn't on the artifact. Uh, it wasn't on the learning, it was on producing the artifact. Mm -hmm. And so you say, did you learn much? In the course of producing, ah, oh, I learned masses. What did you learn? Uh, well, I learned masses. <laughs> yes. uh, similarly, you ask people, do, do you learn a lot from, from your day-to-day -day work? Yeah, loud, especially from the people I work with. What do you learn? Uh, I just learn those. <laughs> How do you learn it? I just do, you know. It's just people, happens. People find it very difficult to articulate the learning that's implicit in artifacts and processes. So I think there are two really quite substantial issues in relation to our education there. One is about the individual versus the collective, and, and the other is just the articulation of yes. the learning that's coming. Yes. The production. Oh, definitely, yes. Um, I mean, if you go back to the uh, PhD by published works again, they have a system for doing that. You, know, you all co authored a paper with such and such a person. So, uh, you know, kept, find out, let them tell us how much they put into that paper and how much you put into it. So, if that's a fairly simplified form, but when you've got something like this here, okay, simply they may have thought of it and devised it, but, you know, there were a lot of processes that they had to go through at the beginning, and perhaps it was the marketing people that didn't do so well process in terms of you know what actually came out at the end of it but yes uh, I think it is important to uh, to recognize that what a person does bring forward is connected to a great deal of other people 
not just the people they work with very closely, but also distributed in networked learning takes place. But, and uh, as I said, I think I'd agree with you in terms of people not being able to uh, articulate that. So I think perhaps, I think it says on my last slide that one of the most important things is, as a, as a tutor then, is to be able to help people articulate it. You know, to ask the appropriate questions to get people to think about what it is they did learn and how it is they did learn it and what the issues were and who was involved in it and how these things connect. Sorry, yeah, um, no, 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 it just it makes me think of a couple of things. One is some of the best APAR programs around actually part of the processes we will run some workshops and beginning the process to help you put together your APAR play. Mm. I think that where that sort of thing can be very useful. Also, it makes me think we're talking about whether it's a sole or joint endeavour. Um, always makes me smile a bit when you go to uh, country houses or you go see great buildings that says, you know, the Duke of Northumberland uh, built this one. <laughs> yes. Building. Now we bloody did it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, it may have been his grand vision, and he ends up taking credit for it because it may have been his main vision and certainly his money. But actually, you know, there was the architect and the skills and builders and so on. That's probably the joint the person gets the kudos. Is, such and such built an empire, built a, 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 an object of some sort of fact, didn't do any, any such thing. He yeah. still back paid for it. Absolutely. Um, well, and again, sort of the academic um, parallel to that is the, uh, the, the doctorates that we give away on the graduation days to the people that are, you know, the great and the good.